Greetings. Today, we delve deep into the complex landscape of the Ukraine war, unraveling layers of information to discern the true essence of its democratic status. President Biden's continued insistence on funding the Ukraine war and his stern warnings have ignited curiosity. Republicans blocking a bill that includes billions of dollars in aid for Israel and Ukraine, despite dire warnings from the administration that U.S. funding for Ukraine will run out in a matter of weeks. President Biden tonight also warning, quote, we can't let Putin win. I believe that any member of Congress who does not support funding for Ukraine is voting for an outcome that will make it easier for Putin. To is a vote against supporting Ukraine is a vote to improve Putin's strategic position. That's just an inescapable. What I know is that the future of the world is at stake. If we fail, if Republicans don't get reasonable in the next 24 to 48 hours, um, Russia is going to march into Ukraine. China is going to be given a green light to invade Taiwan. The world for my children is fundamentally different under that scenario. The United States security is at risk. But using the word fascist. Yeah, he's a fascist. And many tendencies like Adolf Hitler. Yeah. I said it, throw me off the... Putin attacks a NATO ally, if he keeps going, and then he attacks a NATO ally, where we've committed as a NATO member that we defend every inch of NATO territory. Then we'll have something that we don't seek and that we don't have today. American troops fighting Russian troops. США ведут имперскую политику, а Байден заявляет о том, что если Путина не остановить на Украине, то значит Россия нападет на НАТО. Это чушь полная. Я думаю, что и президент Байден это понимает. Это просто фигура речи. And all liberals around the Western world repeating the same message. People now are saying we don't want to fund this war in Ukraine anymore. It's clearly not working because you lied to us from the beginning. You didn't tell us you started it in the first place and that Putin would stop the whole thing if you didn't allow Ukraine to join NATO and that you did not have biolabs in Ukraine, and that you did not manipulate Ukraine elections in 2014 a coup against Yanukovych and did not play any role thus far to bring the conflict to this point that the whole world is in danger of World War III. It is like they have never lied to you. Not about when they smuggled illegal drugs to get Soviets out of South America, lied everything about war in Yemen, about Iraq, about Afghanistan, about Israel, and now about Ukraine. And liberals around the Western countries are part of it. They also lied about their scandals in USA and Canada is even more corrupt and autocratic, how they handled the peaceful protest of truckers, parents march in Canada during vaccine lockdown. They paid legacy media to tell you specific information on vaccines, and censored the dissenting voices who wanted to tell you the truth. This is how slowly they are taking away your rights. This is happening all around the world. They are convicting and banning opposition and censoring free speech. In recent interview, the military chief mentioned how the Ukraine war is helping military industry complex. Do you know how the Ukrainian fund's money is laundered back to military industrial complex? Who in the Western government is perpetuating the war in Ukraine? I even wonder if they launder money your own stocks of military companies like Lockheed Martin? While Ukrainian people do not want war, they wanted to accept the peace deal offered to them back in March 2022. In fact, USA was planning for this war since 2014. Russia has never invaded any country but NATO broke the agreement again and again and moved towards east. Russia warned that Ukraine was a red line for them, and they did what they said they will do. USA and the West pushed for this war, and the endless vibration of lies and narrative that you hear in legacy media or state-funded media is all a bull. Besides Russia has never invaded or moved one inch towards inch. We cannot say that about NATO as they did not uphold their side of agreement. Breached multiple times over. It is what the propagandists want you to know and follow. Are they democracies? Or hypocrisies? There is a rise of authoritarianism around the world under the guise of democracy. Ask Nancy Pelosi, she knows the definition better. Democracy is when you do what we tell you to do. Otherwise you are cancelled or even worse convicted if you are a public figure. Maybe Joe Rogan, Tucker Carlson or Jordan Peterson can shed some light on it. It's a false... Uh, a claim to say that you're going to save money. There is transparency, there is accountability, there is, va there is values-based, as well as the dollars, the values-based uh, courage of the Ukrainian people. If they think they're saving money, they're not. Uh, the Ukrainians have been champions fighting for their democracy and for democracy writ large. If they were ever to lose, which is unthinkable, we must make sure it doesn't happen. But if they were ever to lose, can you imagine how expensive 
it would be to fight Putin in other countries. It's just something that is unaffordable in terms of democracy. But if you're just counting dollars, if you're just doing a green eye shade on it. Well, now let's scrutinize the narrative. Is it genuinely about democracy or is there a more intricate narrative at play? As dissent within Congress and the public gains momentum, the media amplifies the stakes, warning of dire consequences if Ukraine doesn't emerge victorious. Especially the state-funded media, paid by the state with your tax dollars, to lie to you continuously to keep you from waking up to know the truth what's really happening. Get ready for more of that rhetoric in the forthcoming election if you vote for anyone other than Joe Biden and liberals in the Western countries. So democracy is do as I tell you which essentially is what new technological dictatorships look like you're sort of told you're in a democracy but you don't seem to have very much freedom in it excuse me. Isn't that a tyranny if you ask that question? That is helping Putin to win. Here's Chris Murphy escalating the tension on your TV set what I know is that the future of the world is at stake if we fail if Republicans don't get reasonable in the next 24 to 48 hours. Russia is going to march into Ukraine China is going to be given a green light to invade Taiwan. The world for my children is fundamentally different under that scenario. The United States' security is at risk but other threats might include hyperbole hysterical rhetoric designed to prevent you being out of thinking straight and it seems also to continue to legitimize the funding of an unwinnable war. Unwinnable so I don't know why Anthony Blinken is using phrases like win-win 90% of the security assistance we provided has actually been spent here in the United States with our manufacturers with our production and that's produced more American jobs, more growth in our own economy so this has also been a win-win that we need to continue. What I mean by that is that it's economically been valuable he's essentially there just admitted that the money for the military has remained in the US generating jobs that old favorite argument if you let the billionaire class continue to make money. They do not care about Ukraine or Ukrainian life they see their economic outcomes. Ukraine is in ruins for their selfish agenda, for God's sake. Percent of the security assistance we provided has actually been spent here in the United States with our manufacturers, with our production, and that's produced uh, more American jobs, uh, more growth in our own uh, economy. Uh, so this has also been a win-win that we need to continue. Biden's budget director, the head of the OMB, sent a letter yesterday to Speaker Mike Johnson imploring him to spend more money in Ukraine. And what they said is they want to revitalize our defense industrial base. It's uh, that's the new acronym DIB for the MIC, the military industrial complex. And they sent a list of states that would get money when we spend, uh, you know, money on deadly munitions because they have to be manufactured in Alabama or Ohio or Texas. And so, you know, they're saying the quiet part out loud that congressmen tend to vote for this stuff because a lot of this federal spending that goes to Ukraine is actually laundered back to the military industrial complex. And in some ways, not very efficiently, but in some ways it enriches people in yes. their districts and the stockholders, some of whom are congressmen. Biden's budget director sent a letter yesterday to Speaker Mike Johnson imploring him to spend more money in Ukraine and what they said is they want to revitalize our defense industrial base and they sent a list of states that would get money when we spend you no know, money on deadly munitions because they have to be manufactured in US. So you know they're saying the quiet part out loud that congressmen tend to vote for this stuff because a lot of this federal spending that goes to Ukraine is actually laundered back to the military industrial complex and in some ways not very efficiently but in some ways it enriches people in their districts and the stockholders some of whom are congressmen amazing now you see why there is such a requirement for censorship because the way that the media functions now with figures like Tucker. On X and other comparable voices you could just say do you reckon that these people in Congress owning stocks and shares is influencing them more? their ability to say it's improving their local economies in their states do you think that might be a factor other than of course this humanitarian motive that we keep keep hearing so much about on CNN and MSNBC that is why censorship laws are so important because you have to starve the media space of the oxygen of opposition that's what's happening and believe me they'll go to extraordinary lengths to shut down dissenting. Voices one person who's probably pretty safe to speak in public is. Nancy Pelosi here she is defending Ukrainian democracy. Many thousands have died needlessly in the unnecessary unwinnable and increasingly unaffordable war in Ukraine however, we must question the foundation of these claims, is Ukraine authentically a democracy? Diving into the heart of the matter, recent funding challenges and the suppression of critical information paint a picture that raises eyebrows about the authenticity of Ukraine's democratic credentials. A thorough examination reveals startling truths. The stifling of opposition parties, restrictions on media, and the postponement of elections pose valid questions about the true nature of democracy within Ukraine. Vitaly Klitschko who's the mayor of Kiev. 
He warned that Ukrainians are losing trust in Zelensky who he says is becoming increasingly autocratic and that Ukraine could resemble Russia in the near future. Vitaly Klitschko, who's the mayor of Kyiv, he's delivered an unprecedented critique of President Vladimir Zelensky. Who warned that Ukrainians are losing trust in Zelensky who he says is becoming increasingly autocratic in his presidents, so much so that he warned that uh, Ukraine could resemble Russia in the near future, at least politically. But Zelensky um, is facing criticism from other high-ranking officials in Ukraine, really the first uh, signs of a growing rift in Ukrainian leadership, uh, particularly as the war sort of settles into a stalemate for the foreseeable future. Some have argued that perhaps uh, striking some kind of um, accord or some kind of negotiation with Russia could end the war, uh, but this is something that uh, for the moment Zelensky is vehemently opposed to. Zelensky's is facing criticism from other high-ranking officials in Ukraine. Ukrainian people have shown non-confidence in Zelensky many times in the last few years. As the war settles into a stalemate for the foreseeable future some have argued that perhaps striking some kind of peace deal accord or some kind of negotiation with Russia could end the war but this is something that for the moment Zinsky is opposed to. While Nancy Pelosi and those other people that have vested financial interests in perpetuating a war know a lot more about Ukrainian politics and democracy than a Ukrainian politician who says it's not a democracy while he's still the mayor of Kiev. In May of 2022 the Ukrainian parliament passed a law banning all these 11 parties including the opposition platform for life which had held fully 10% of the seats in parliament among the 11 bound parties are the Socialist Party of Ukraine, the Progressive Socialist Party of the Ukraine, the Union of Left Forces and the Communist Party of Ukraine. Being heavily funded democracies do not ban elections but Ukraine has put the democratic process itself on hold since declaring martial war in 2022. It has been repeatedly extended most recently in July 2023 as a result of that vote in the Ukrainian parliament where all opposition parties have been removed the parliamentary elections scheduled for last month were cancelled presidential elections were scheduled for March 2024. Ukrainian government ordered the nine largest television networks in Ukraine to combine their news operations into a single state-controlled news program called Telemarathon. Also, in April 2022 the National Security Council ordered three independent television channels associated with Zelensky's predecessor taken off the air democracies do not do that. In December 2022 Zelensky signed a law which gave the National Broadcasting Council statutory authority to regulate all print broadcast and digital media. That's a lot of authoritarian control for a democracy. Oh you think there's a war on and in wartime you have to legitimize authoritarianism. Maybe so but we continuously live in this time of perennial crisis because that does legitimize authoritarianism more broadly but do countries that are in wars always ban democracy? President Abraham Lincoln suspended habus corpus for southern sympathizers during the American Civil War but never cancelled elections. Neither did Winston Churchill. Churchill actually lost the 1945 British election during World War II. Democracies do not restrict religious freedom In December 2022 Zelensky banned the activities of all religious organizations linked to Russia This included Ukraine's largest denomination the Ukrainian Orthodox Church which had been closely integrated with the Russian Orthodox Church for more than a thousand years. In May 2022 the Church's Synod of Bishops in a historic step really voted to sever all ties to Moscow and condemned the Russian Orthodox Church's support for the invasion of Ukraine. This was not enough for the Ukrainian government. It increased efforts to ban the Orthodox Church while organizing and promoting a new state-controlled church. Allegiance and seizing the property of those who resist democracy The Ukrainian parliament is now preparing to formally outlaw the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Democracies do not seek to ban a nation's oldest and largest denomination, no, in fact that's a clear sign of tyranny. The international stage plays a crucial role in shaping perceptions of the conflict. Are we truly championing a democratic cause, or could there be hidden agendas influencing our involvement? Consider alternative viewpoints, such as those voiced by Thomas Massey. His concerns about the motivations behind financial aid and its potential ties to the military-industrial complex prompt us to re-evaluate the narrative. While Nancy Pelosi staunchly defends the narrative of Ukrainian democracy, a closer examination reveals fissures in this portrayal, prompting us to question the depth of our understanding. Further scrutiny into the situation in Ukraine exposes authoritative measures, including state-controlled media and restrictions on religious freedoms. These actions cast shadows on the legitimacy of Ukraine's democratic claims. Consider the broader impact on international relations. Are we contributing to the establishment of true democracy, or could our involvement be guided by interests that transcend democratic ideals? To understand the present, we must delve into the past.
Historical nuances, including the 2014 revolution and geopolitical complexities, provide context that shapes the current democratic narrative. As we navigate this intricate web of information, it becomes clear that the democracy narrative in Ukraine may not withstand close scrutiny. Let's collectively reassess where our support goes and demand transparency in decisions that hold profound consequences. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. Stay informed, question narratives, and remember, seeking the truth is a collective effort.